Hello, everyone. I am so excited to introduce you, Mary, who is today's guest. So Mary Chen. So I met her through an e-women network and, and actually she's over in Canada. Um, so I'm really honored to have her today as my guest for this podcast. Um, so a little short introduction, Mary Chen. She's a creator of Organized Science Productions. She's a podcast strategist and voice coach. She has over 20 years of experience in radio business as a commercial producer and a voiceover artist. So you will hear it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary is based in Victoria, BC, Canada. So welcome to my show, Mary. Thank you, Si Wing. This is so great. We can finally connect. Yes. And so obviously podcast is such a hot topic these days. So I'm really excited to ask you. I've got a bunch of questions. But First of all, I want to ask you, so in, in your website, you mentioned that your voice is your number one instrument. Can you elaborate on that? What do you really mean by that? And when you say instrument, I, it felt like, you know, when you practice, you probably can get better. But sometimes we just say, oh, God, I have a terrible voice. So what then? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what I mean about your number one instrument is you are always talking, selling yourself meeting people, networking, whatever it may be, your voice is the thing that carries with you wherever you go. Whether, you know, you are actually trying to make a sale in a business a sense, or if you're just meeting someone new for the first time, or even, you know, talking with other parents when you're dropping your kids off at <laughs> school or something like that, right? It's, your instrument is your voice. And that is how people connect with you more so than anything visual. You know, you, you could be wearing baggy pants and a big hat and people will still, you know, hear you differently based on what you say versus mm. treating you based on how you look. Wow. And so I feel that even especially in podcasting in the traditional sense, when, you know, people are listening from their Apple podcast app or Spotify or something like that on their phones, you don't have that visual sense. So your instrument is your voice. That's all you have to really showcase who you are. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> so, so many things to impact, but I know that like there was always I'm sidetracked a little bit, you know, when people talk about audio books, because um, mm -hmm. I published a couple books myself. And when it comes to whether you want to narrate it yourself or get a voiceover artist or like a, they, they, what is it, narrator. Yes. Um, and a lot of people, obviously that's pros and cons of both, you know, choice. The thing about using your own voice is that people feel more personal, they connect with yes. you and especially self-help books. They really, I think that's really important to people connect to who you are because you were talking about your know, experiences or your expertise. Um, fiction may be slightly different because I think fictions that you can have people can really more dramatize it or like more performance. Yeah, you need um, that acting ability. Yeah, exactly. And and oftentimes writer or, uh, you know, people may not have that um, ability. That said, like it is, you know, some author, I have on, honestly I have to confess, if they have like a really weird voice or they speak really slowly or it just kind of annoy me in some way, I then I really prefer to have a narrator. So it's like, but you don't know whether people will like your voice or not, right? So it's a bit of, <laughs> it's a bit tricky on that one. But I agree. I, I think if you have a decent voice, then obviously you can improve as an instrument. You can practice and make it better in terms of delivery. I think using your voice, it's a lot nicer. Yeah. And in terms of going back to that audiobook you were talking about, that's the same thing with me. When I'm listening to an audiobook, I want it to be the uh, writer, the author of the book, mm -hmm. because I want to hear it from their own perspective. A narrator will choose to read it in their own way. But mm -hmm. those subtleties and those nuances can only come through through your voice than the way you had wanted it to be written. You know, it's those underlining tones and that context that you want to convey, you do that, yes, through words, but a narrator will read it very differently and convey a different message from the way that you may have wanted it to come across. Yes. Especially self-help or self-improvement type of books, often you have personal experience and there, there's a lot of emotions. You can hear yeah. it um, yes, when people exactly. talk about the, the story or other people's story, you can, but, but 
with a narrator, often they can pronounce like enunciate better, or they have better techniques. You can hear the technique, but、mm-hmm. it's not the same emotional delivery. So yes, yeah, it's, ne- it's never about the the technique. I think with a book, an audio book, and a podcast, re- it really is just a marketing platform.、Mm-hmm. It's a way for you to be able to connect with a potential、uh, listener, client, audience. Because I've heard it too, where、um, I would listen to an audio book. And then not realize it wasn't the author of the book.、Mm-hmm. And then I'll see the author like on a YouTube video or something like that.、I'm、like, oh, that wasn't person the person. <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh, I wish it was you who was reading the book instead. Yeah, but also, you know, to start it out, I mean, also there's cost involved to get a narrator. So, oh yes, yes. Um, there's many things to consider. But I let's go back to something I want to ask you from the beginning, which is. You know, how can we make a better connection with our audience with using our voice? Because sometimes, you know, that may be our intention, but doesn't mean that we have the right strategy or、um, know how. So, is there any quick tips you can tell us better to connect with our audience with our voice? Yeah, my number one thing is always start with the foundation of how do you want your listener to feel. Because if you can get them to feel that same passion that you have about whatever it is that you're talking about, they will pick up that energy. So if you want them to feel very, very passionate about what you're saying, you got to bring that passion forward. And or if you are talking about, you know, maybe in the self help book, it's something very vulnerable. Well then. You're going to be vulnerable as well, and you're going to bring your voice down, and it's just going to create a different mood.、Mm. So, if you can、um, figure out who your ideal person is that's listening to you and how they want to feel, that will just come naturally through your voice. <laughs> and you know what I was thinking immediately when we we're talking about it was, you know,、um, I don't know does it happen in Canada, but. Okay. In Asia or in Australia, there's some two dollar stores that they、yeah. have a microphone and there's a recorded voice. Say two dollar,、uh, I don't know, plastic bag and four dollars flowers last day. Oh, like the specials, yeah, yeah, the yeah all the special, but it's all the sales items. And someone、yeah. will, will we mention it and it goes on repeat and they put that thing outside the store. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like the worst marketing for me. It's like I don't want to get in that store because. First of all, that was really annoying. <laughs> repeat, <laughs> and usually the person, the voice is two dollar flowers today. Yeah, two dollar flowers、okay. today for da da da. Because they have、okay, no passion. Okay, two pays is three dollars、yeah. fifty. Last day closing down. Like yeah, because there's like, no passion.、Oh. They're just reading it because they have to do it. It's part of their job. Da 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 da. But if you are actually passionate about what you're doing, then you can be like. Two dollars for these flowers, and、Kitty. the flowers are da da da. Yeah, and this is closing special, so make sure that you go and get this for three dollars only. Da da da. Like that projection of energy happens through your voice. You see, the, like this is something you probably don't know. So actually, my father is a stage actor most of his、mm-hmm. life, and I was acting until I was. Get into puberty and start to look awkward and behave weirdly, and so no one wanted to cast me, and I retired. So, to speak.、Oh. um, so, so I came across a lot of people, especially like theater actors. So there's a way for them to communicate, and because they know how to use the instrument, whether it's voice or facial expression, but as you said, they really bring the emotion in. So whether they're selling you a book or they're telling you like a new story, it's interesting because there's life. In that in piece of information, and so when we were talking about those poor salesman stuff, and I think people they they overlook the fact that it can be creative in anything, whether it's selling two dollars flowers, plastic、yeah. flowers, or whatever. But it's bring life into whatever you're doing, then and you can be creative and you can bring your emotion when your heart is in it. You can you can do amazing things, like you said. We can really talk about a two dollar plastic flower in five million ways to make it、yes. more exciting, right? If yeah, you're exactly. In it. <laughs> exactly. If you're passionate about it, people are just going to be drawn to you,、mm. no matter what you're talking about. The content actually does not matter. It is how you're going to convey that emotion and that passion in your voice.、Mm. 
And you know,、um, I love your episode called "Discover Your True Voice by Uncovering Your Past." And I mentioned it to you,、um, my previous emails that you know,、um, when I was living in the UK, I have a tendency to obviously you kind of it's not like、mm, acting or、uh, not being true to yourself, but you kind of get influence from others. So I start to have a bit more British accent or the way I spoke about certain things a little bit just different. You know,、yeah. like there's just weird things that you picked up, and then obviously when I'm talking to someone from US or Canada, I may say more, you know, or <laughs> I don't know the filler word like that's very Aussie. Anyway, so I can pick up those influences, and so when I was listening to your episode, I start to think like discovering my true voice. So I guess that's part of me being. Living in so many different continents, so that's not that I'm faking it. It's just it's part of me. So I want you to talk a little bit more about discovering our true voice, like how to or why is it so important? Yeah, it's important because you have to know nobody was born with the same voice that they have now. Because your voice changes, like you said, it's all the different countries that you've lived in. Your voice is. Uh, emulating your community, and so, you know, if you had someone growing up with you that, you know, if you you were growing up in Asia, Hong Kong, China, you might have a different accent, and then as you grow older, you you move to London, and then you picked up that accent, and then now it sounds like what you're doing is something called code switching, so you are emulating. The speech based on who you are talking to, and I do the same thing as well. And you know, lots of people do, but maybe more instead of accents in terms of how you say something. So, for example, if you're going to be speaking to your mom, it's going to be very, very different from the way you speak to your boss. You know, you put on a different persona each time you're speaking to a different person.、Mm. I love it so much, but I, it's. So at at the moment I just can't switch, but I really noticed myself like using different was it coding what switch code? Yeah, code switching yeah code it's switching. not a bad thing it's just it's what not, everybody does it's so interesting like I only when you are in an observer position then you can really pick this out、um, mm -hmm. you know when you are listening to other and talking and sometimes we're so、um, Involved in what we're saying and doing,、um, and then only when we take a step back, when we become more observer, then we can really hear ourselves better.、Um, so that's something I was always so fascinated by.、Um, so now I want to talk to you about audience and podcast itself, because you know now everyone. Is saying that you know whether it's an offer or you're running an internet business, whatever like that is. They say whomever that needs a platform or have a platform, you know, you need a podcast. So it seems like everybody's saying podcast, podcast, podcast. So first of all, what do you think that's true? And second of all, what are the essentials? What are the most important thing we need to bear in mind when we want to, you know, consider starting one? Like you know, I mentioned quite a few things in our conversation. Like you know, we can go really technical, right? <laughs> yeah, we could. We can, but also we can have something very fundamental and basic. So you know. Yeah, exactly. So you know, your first part of the question about podcasting, everybody's just saying you need to be have one or be on one because it is the next big thing.、Uh, you know, blogging was huge; it still is,、um, but podcasting is the next thing. So. Even before the pandemic, there was just under two, just under one million podcasts, and then a year after the pandemic, it was almost double at two million podcasts, and now, like a year and a half in, we are almost at four million podcasts. Wow! And that <laughs> is, you know, and that is only.、Um, Calculated through Apple Podcasts, looking at Apple Podcasts itself, you know you could also get podcasts on Spotify or on YouTube. Like, it's just four million on Apple. However, that might seem like a big number. It is a big number. It is a big number, but there are billions of blogs. You know, there are billions of YouTube channels, 
And so people are saying you need to have a podcast now because it's still in its infancy. Podcasts, the industry is still so young that if you get on something first, then you can monopolize on capitalize on that that new new thing. However, I'm not saying everybody needs to have one actually. It's I find it's great if you like to speak first of all. If you don't like to speak, then maybe that's not your thing. Mm. And if you do want to start a podcast, it really is as basic as having a microphone and having a way to record. And yeah. making sure that when you are recording that you're in a nice quiet space like you're in your office you right now you know your husband and kids aren't home and it's same with me i'm in my office space and it's nice and quiet so that you don't have those um sounds that can be a disturbance or a distraction for listeners mm. because in an audio only format most people are listening on earbuds or with their headphones and so the sound is really close to their ears <laughs> and not and people don't realize a microphone picks up all the noise. Yeah. Like if we're just in, a, in the same room together and we don't have headphones on, we're just talking together. We don't realize that sometimes there's a loud car driving by, there's the neighbor's dog is barking, or you have the AC fan going, or the dishwasher is running in the background or something. But with a microphone, and then when people are hearing with earbuds, it is so pronounced and it can be such a distraction from your voice and what your message is meant to be on the podcast. The so, same goes with my cold this week. Like people can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I have no doubt, but what are you going to do? Um, exactly. You know, we can spend days and weeks to talk about the technicality, how oh, we yes. do better with podcasts. But I actually want to step back, um, I think for today's, um, purpose. I actually want to ask you a little bit uh, from what you were saying earlier with your answer to this question, because yes, 4 million podcasts, billions of blogs, so still infancy. That said, you know the way how it works with the internet, with the SEO. So with your blogs, yeah. you, we kind of know, um, you know, how to get discovered in a way that it's, I think not that we all know 100%, but it's it's a little bit more um, known or um, less mysterious in some ways yeah. that how you get found, you know what to do and it's very visual. You have a lot you can do. A lot of simple obvious steps you can take to improve your blog or your website to get discovered. However, in the podcast universe, for me, it's different universe. There's Amazon universe, there's YouTube universe, there's podcast universe and blog and website. So with podcasts, the discoverability, it works quite differently because a person has to say, you know, you have to go to Apple iTunes or Spotify to get onto the podcast most of the time, unless you follow certain people from the website, but most likely they go to iTunes, right? And even mm -hmm. though we distribute across multiple platforms, most people, if they have Apple phone, they would go to iTunes and check things out. So that's a very different ball game, very different universe to get discovered. So can you talk a little bit more about it? What are thoughts about how to get found perhaps, or what are the yeah. things to bear in mind for starters? Yeah. Yeah. So I would actually say for a general um, how to get found. Actually, having a podcast would be a really great thing. Because even if you searched your name, yes. whoever you're, you're talking to, or a client that you want to work with or somebody, and then you type in the word podcast after it actually comes up on Google. Wait, the so actual podcast episode. Podcast. Like yeah, my podcast will come up on your Google search, and you can hit play straight from Google. But if for example, when I Google my name, not that I'm like so egotistical, but when I work with my SEO people, they yeah. say you keep checking, right? So you type in your name and see what comes up. Yeah. So I will type in my name, mm -hmm. but I never type in my name and podcast. So, so that's, that's interesting. Yeah. So if you type in your name and podcast, your podcast actually shows up and you can, there's a little play button and you can hit play straight from Google. Right. So what Google is actually doing is spending a lot of investment into podcasts or audio in general. So what they actually want to do in the future is to be able to listen to all the episodes that are publicly available and kind of create their own transcription version so that their algorithms can make anything heard in your podcast able to be searched 
on Google. Well, okay. Yeah. So even if you don't <laughs> type in the word podcast, they want podcasts to eventually be searchable, just right. like how right now, if you type in anything, a video will come up from YouTube. Yes. Right. So they want podcasts to be the next thing. So when you type something up, you'll see a YouTube video, you'll see podcasts, and then you'll see all the regular searches after that. Wait, but that's not like happening just that isn't it? Because last time when I checked my name, it's the books, it's the Amazon, it's the yeah, YouTube. It's, this not is yet. their future. This right. is what they're saying that they plan on doing. So right now, if you type in your name and the word podcast, yeah. that's when the podcast will show up. But in the okay. future, they don't, they want you to just type in, for example, your name and the podcast to automatically show up. That, okay, two sub, sub question. Number mm -hmm. one, um, uh, do you have to be distributing on Google Play in order to get that? No, okay. Google, actually Google Play is dead. Oh, Actually, I didn't you, know they are dead. You, I... Yeah, you don't. They got rid of it in the past year or two. So wow. you don't actually have to be on Google Play anymore. Uh, Google right now, will. there's two ways to get on Google is one, just making sure that your website has your podcast on there. And so yeah. there's like a certain code that you need to put in on your website, blah, 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 blah. And the robots will do its thing. The second thing is that they released something called a podcast manager. So Google Podcast Manager is something that you can sign up to and put your RSS feed in, mm. and that will give you Google stats as well. So you can look up um, what people are searching for when they click play on your podcast. Amazing. So everybody put this note down, Google Podcast Manager, check it yeah. out. So yes. another question is um, following up is that you, you talk about they almost wanted to have it go in the future and to and able to trans uh, transcribe yeah. your podcast actually i am ping painfully doing transcription <laughs> for each episode like not me personally doing it but yes. i definitely get it done mm -hmm. um so everybody that i know say it is really important because the seo for the seo for google to recognize all the content it's important to get this done would that change that step if in the future maybe we don't have to if google actually manage with that technology or advancement yeah yes and no because <laughs> transcripts with ai when it's automatically done is you know is only 80 percent accurate or maybe less depending on your audio quality so oh, if you yeah if you are <laughs> painstakingly doing your transcripts to make sure they're correct then you know that's still something that i would recommend you to do also not just for seo but also because of accessibility for the hearing impaired right. they can click play but then they you know they can also read along and however like i was saying google Google's little robots are pretty smart and they can figure out if a tran if it is actually a transcript versus content. So right. Google in SEO standpoint, they're not actually going to rank something with a transcript that highly just because they know it's a transcript. But there are, um, I believe Spotify on some of their podcasts, they're already integrating this new technology of transcripts, automatic transcripts on their show. So that seems like it is the new wave of what uh, a lot of the podcast listening apps are going to do. But again, that's Spotify, which is the number two listening app in all the world. Apple Podcasts still number one at a big percentage, but Spotify is chasing Apple and I, I'm pretty sure they're neck to neck right now. Yeah, and so if, if Spotify is leading in that transcription technology, everybody is also going to follow suit. Mm. And wait, so you said something about if you have it on Google, if you have transcript, you're actually not going to rank that high. What do you mean by that? I thought you'd need to have transcript to rank higher. You need content to rank high. Every time you publish new content, Google will think, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. They're also always publishing new content. Great. We'll rank them higher based on your keywords. And but blah, if you blah, just blah, blah, blah. throw transcript, it doesn't. But if you throw job. just a transcript in there, I think Google is getting smart enough to realize it is a transcript because sometimes 
depending on the type of transcripts you do, there could be a time code, or it could be just be a name and then a giant paragraph and then another name and a giant paragraph, like regular content for blogs, for example, don't look that way. So I think Google right. is figuring this out. Well, so everybody, you need to be a good student. So you need to do your homework. Um, so for me, like, so my regular content, it's, it's a bit both because I usually have, as you have seen before, that I will mention something about this week's time content. So that's a bit of content, a bit of notes and highlight, blah, blah. And then that's great. That's good. The transcript. Have. So I am doing both in that sense. I'm not just dumping yeah. the transcript, but I actually talk about what we're talking about first yes. as content. Okay. Yes. So I do my homework. Great. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're you're doing a great job. Like you not only do you have the transcripts there, like I think the transcript is also great if you wanted to repurpose that content and pull quotes. Um, if oh yeah, you... many people turn them into books. Eventually. That was my the next thing I was going to say. <laughs> if you have a transcript and you're planning on writing a book, if you did solo episodes, each episode of your podcast could be a chapter in your book. And then you have the transcript right there to help you facilitate putting the whole book together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the so transcript is, yeah, it, the transcript is like a lot of people think it's for SEO, but there are so many other great uses for it. Like I was saying for accessibility, that's my number one thing. Usually mm. um, I recommend for transcript is accessibility issues. And, uh, you know, some people like to dump a chapter of the, like the other way around. They dump a chapter of their book. They read it. They dump a chapter as an episode. So what do you think about that? Have you seen I anyone doing that? Like they would say, this is a special season. And they say they have 10 chapters. They read 10 chapters of the book. So basically giving the book for free or something. But usually that's kind of a magnet for another book, another course, whatever. They use it mm. as a magnet, as a lead. But they dump a chapter as an episode. So the other way around. So they wrote a book and then they read a chapter. <laughs> what do you think about that? That is a great uh, marketing tease. A yeah. podcast essentially is an extension of your brand or business. It's a marketing platform. And so if you're giving away content anyway, why not do that on a mm. podcast? So, you know, don't, don't give the entire book away, but yeah, a chapter or two, and then say, if you want more, you got to get the book. Yeah. I think, you know, if you are creative and you enjoy doing it, there's a million ways to make it better and make it fun. So, but I think yeah. we need to wrap up the interview, but I really want to ask you as a final question, um, what do you see in five years time, how the podcast industry may look like, or what kind of opportunities we can start dreaming about or for perhaps for monetization or whatever that is up for grabs? Yeah, I, even in the past year, monetization has been a huge, huge thing. Like Apple Podcasts and Spotify created their own monetization subscription platform where regular podcasters can make money from, mm. from Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And so I'm, I'm going, you're going to see a lot more opportunities for people to make money that way. And then also ads, the ads are going to be changing a lot but more. I I hate them too, but that's the way that the bigger podcasts, like the ones that have a network behind them and a team behind them, that's how they're going to start generating more money because they're spending so much money creating these shows. They mm -hmm. need a ad revenue to, to but keep it sustainable. Know, we, I fast forward, like I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> like those that have the team behind it, their show have millions of listeners, let's say. It makes sense for them to, uh, to have some advertising. But I always fast forward that two minutes. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, but on the other hand, I understand, but I don't really enjoy it. And for me, weirdly, I would say, because I don't like it, so I don't want to do it myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, find too, there are two different types of ads that, right. you know, the, again, like the big network ones, they always have the ads that just get thrown in and they're kind of the same as like a radio commercial. Yes, they exactly. don't re They don't really have much to do with the content. They're just kind of there exactly. to make money. But then the other type of ads are the host read ads. And I think those are the ones that can really create impact, especially if it is going to be an extension of your business. Because when you have a podcast, people already trust what you're saying. You have an authority, you've created the space. So when you say as part of your show, 
hey, don't forget, I have this coming up. This is a course that will change your life, blah, 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 because of this, this, and this. People are more uh, going to buy something that you recommend as an endorsement almost rather than an ad. It will yeah. sound like it's just part of the show. Yeah, this is very organic and it's already happening. Like you, yeah, you hear that's a lot of people okay. has yeah. a book coming out and they go on everybody's podcast platform because they want people to talk about their book, you know? Yeah. That's all that's actually okay because it gives you content. If there is something, you know, to to enjoy and to learn from. I'm okay with that. What do you call this? Um, is it a term for this? <laughs> Everybody just calls it an ad, but I I equate it more to an, an endorsement. Yeah. Because that's how I remember from when I worked in the radio days. There was a commercial, but then there was an endorsement, and that was totally separate, even though they still are both it's, ads. It's perfectly great. Like if, say, say, you have a course or a book about podcasts, you're expert in podcasts, I want to ask you a question about podcasts. It's completely organic and useful to interview you and ask you about your book because everybody gets some information so that if they want to get your book, they can come, like they can follow it up. So yeah. I think that's actually win-win. I think it's perfect. And I definitely hope that podcasts become more and more popular than a lot of uh, small business owner or unknown authors or creator can get found that way because, you know, I, and I do think some of the podcast um, commentary or information are greater than some of the news or programs out there. Yeah, especially because with a podcast, it's more long form. It's like these, most of them the, these days are these interviews, long form interviews, which you can get into the nuance of something. You can really show your personality yeah. versus if it's a blog, you're not quite sure, you know, it's a news article, how they're coming across. If you're on the news, you only get like 30 seconds or five minutes maximum. So really with podcasting, you can so show who you are and people can really get to know, like, and trust you. And that's why it's a great marketing platform. Yeah, I do completely agree everything you said, especially I feel you can play clever with words or sometimes with 2000 words an article, you have to really show your best in some way. I think there's techniques of writing a great article, right? Mm -hmm. But in a podcast, because the host can talk about or an interviewer can ask questions that can, you know, take a step further and can be a bit more personal and sometimes surprising you know we didn't talk about all the questions I have in mind but we go where it needs to go the conversation has life on its own and that becomes more interesting right yeah <laughs> really exactly is. yes no for me too exactly you know like if you just go on all these short little interviews or do your if you had a publicity tour and it's just short little clips sometimes it can be taken out of context. And that's not exactly what you wanted to say, but on a podcast, you have time to expand on that thought. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much, Mary. It has been amazing. I feel we can talk for like, six Ever. hours yeah or five days straight but <laughs> five days straight no, no but sleep I, just talking you know what like i think we need to talk about it so maybe we'll have to like <laughs> become do a part two exactly like maybe after some time so now we're sitting at where we are at landscape is the four million podcast this is where we are with the business in terms of what people are doing but maybe like after some time we'll come back and we'll say the landscape has completely changed. Who knows? You know, that would be and really it, interesting. It is. I like, I find every year because the podcast industry is so young and so new, everybody's trying new things and it is changing all the time. Something that we were doing last year is not the same that we're doing this year. Yeah. You got to so, yeah. keep up with <laughs> all this. Yeah, music. exactly. Um, but it has been also really fun just to listen to um, your answer because it can go very technical, very businessy. But I think we touch on something that's truly important, which is about finding your true voice, connect with audience, with who you are, with your emotions. And it's really about you as well. You cannot pretend to be someone who you're not, especially over a long form content yes. like a podcast. Mm -hmm. You can't act all the time. You can hide under <laughs> 2000 word article. But yes. if you are weird... <laughs> People can hear it and see yeah. it. Then but they ago. like that weirdness. They connect to that I mean, personality. Yeah. I don't oh, mean okay. good weird. Like good I, weird. I feel we're a bit good weird in some ways, but <laughs> like I, I feel I'm a bit like oh, all of that. But so anyway, thank you so much for today's time. And I really enjoy it. And I, I'm sure my listeners or 
people who who watch the videos sometimes they will find that it's truly fun interesting and maybe they want to get into this podcast game when they're still sort of young yes exactly yeah so how can people connect with you get your expertise find out more about what you do yeah my website would be the place to go it is organized sound.ca so organized with a z yeah i will <laughs> and put that because i'm in canada yep um or i'm active on instagram as well at organized sound productions thank you so much and um cannot wait to connect with you again because yeah every time we'll we connect, it's so much to say so yes. thank you thank you thank you thank you